Whether it's cars, comics, video games, or violins, there's a little geek in all of us. It's time to give your geek a voice. It's time for Geek Therapy. Here's your host, Johnny Hamburger. Welcome to Geek Therapy Radio. Once again, your new favorite show. I am Johnny Hamburger, your mental curator for this evening or this afternoon or this morning. Whenever you're listening to Geek Therapy Radio, whether that's right here in KPRC 950 at 12 a.m. Sunday mornings, or as I like to think of it, Saturday night, baby, or you're listening on the podcast, which I... It's a great way to listen. Just listen in your car, on your commute, to or from work. Listen in the morning with your breakfast. Listen at night as you go to bed. Or you take a shower. Take me to shower with you. Um, I'm here to help. So, I need my geek squeaky, squeaky geeky clean. So, take me in the shower with you. Maybe I should get off that. So, there's also the YouTube. Geek Therapy Radio on YouTube. And all the social media, Geek Therapy Radio on Facebook, YouTube, as I mentioned, Instagram. Uh, There's Geek Therapy Radio on Twitter, but I don't ever use Twitter uh, or Snapchat or any of that stuff. So just, just, just Google the Geek Therapy Radio. Use the Google to Google the Geek Therapy Radio. Subscribe, like, and... Uh, Make sure you get that little notification every time the podcast goes up. And here's a little hint. The podcast usually goes up before the show airs. So the show airs on KPRC 950 uh, right here at 12.06 technically a.m. Sunday morning. But I usually have the podcasts available sometime on Friday. Ready for your weekend. Latest Saturday morning. But if you... uh. You might get that little notification sometime early Friday morning. That's usually when I upload them. Either way, just go subscribe to all that stuff. Now, on to the show. 2017, the year that this show is being recorded right now, this episode of Geek Therapy Radio, episode 31. Um, This year, December 2017, is scheduled... The very first human head transplant. They are going to remove the head off of one human and put it on a donor body. So let's get into the technicals and the morals and the ethicals as good as well as I can do all three of those because I'm not a doctor. I am not a theologian. I am not clergy. I'm just a person with my own ideas, my own thoughts. But um, yeah, transplanting a human head. They're going for it this year in December 2017. Um, It's a man with a neurological disease. He's it's a it's a computer scientist out of Russia. His name is Valerie. Oh, I got to zoom my specs in on this. Spiridonov, Spiridonov, I think. Valery Spiridonov, computer scientist who uh, doesn't have much control of his body. And he has volunteered, he volunteered long ago to do this, but he's volunteered to be the first human test subject uh, and receive a body transplant. That's a better way to think of it. It's not a head transplant, it's a body transplant. So basically, you know, we do heart transplants all the time, liver transplants, lung transplants, different transplants that we do. Do we do colon? I think we do. I think we do colon transplants. With any transplant of a body part, of an organ, there's a risk of rejection, of course. You have to make sure the blood types match and all that kind of stuff. Um, So a better way to think of this human head transplant is more. it's a human body transplant. So, the head is going to get a donor body. Now, I'm just thinking, practically, logistically, not even thinking about all the ramifications and complications of doing a surgery. And I'm not just talking about reconnecting veins and arteries in the neck. The spinal cord is where the action's at, but we'll get to that in a second. 
that's the tricky part, the spinal cord. Um, so I'm thinking of the logistics of the donor body. Obviously, we, we know who, whose human head we're going to use. We don't know yet the donor body. So basically, around in December, I don't know exactly what days, they are pretty much going to have, the, have the, the guy with the head waiting around for a donor body to come in. So maybe some sort of car accident, some... Maybe somebody dies of of a natural cause, has a heart attack. I don't. How can they use? They need a body that's perfect, though. Like I said, maybe a man of a similar age dies of a heart attack. Well, you can't use that body then because it's got a bum ticker. How would you transplant the human head, and also then do a, a heart transplant? Uh, anyway, so basically, they're gonna wait for somebody to die and have a body that's usable to be a donor. And it has to be very specific. It can't just be anybody dying. It has to be somebody who matches. It has to be a good candidate for this guy's head. The heart has to be good. Lungs have to be good. Everything about the body has to be uh, perfectly suited. Or as well as as perfectly suited as they can possibly get to uh, Valerie's head. This man, Valerie. Um. So they got to do that. And once they get the body, they're going to they're going to cool the head down. They're going to put him in a coma. Of course, the dead body's already dead. Whatever. They'll keep that prepped, keep blood flowing, keep everything moist and viable. Um, but they're going to cool Valerie's head down to 10 degrees Celsius um, because they're going to basically have to kill him for a little while. But they need to re reduce all the risk of brain damage by cooling down the brain, cooling down the head. And after they do that, here's what's going to happen. And again, I'm not a neuroscientist, scientist, neuroscientist. I'm not a surgeon, but uh, they are going to. It's not like there's just going to be a guillotine coming down. Shink. And then they take that and they just tie it up Frankenstein style with the bolts to the next to the donor body. That's not how it's going to happen. Obviously. Um, they'll have them both prepared. They have the, the guy with it, with the head one in one place and the donor body in another place. And they will carefully remove the head from the donor body. Sorry if this is a little bit morbid for everybody. It is unsettling. It is unsettling. Absolutely unsettling. Um, so they're going to remove the head, toss in the garbage. I don't know. They're not going to put in the garbage. They'll probably cremate it or whatever. The family. That's the other thing. The family of the donor body has to have something to bury or they need to have something to have to, you know, get their uh, closure. So maybe they'll just cremate the head and give them the ashes or something like that. Something they can bury, something they can scatter. Because um, if this all works, the donor body, that guy's going to be. Uh, a hero as well a martyr for science as well um so they'll t remove the head carefully from the donor body and then they will remove the head extra carefully from the living guy <laughs> from the living guy from valerie spiridonov so i keep blanking that name spiridonov okay so they remove the body from very delicately his head and they will very delicately, you know, sever all the veins in his neck and the muscles and the trachea and the esophagus and the corded artery and the jugular and everything else that they need. That, Like I said earlier, that's going to be the easy part. Doing very clean cuts of the arteries and veins, that's going to be the easy part. The hard part comes when they have to ever so delicately sever the spine, ever so delicately decapitate the living man. By the way, side note, decapitation doesn't mean your head comes off. Like you see in the movie, someone gets their head chopped off. That is that is decapitation, but decapitation also, it just means any severing of the spinal cord in your neck. So, the cause of death can be decapitation if you break your neck and sever your spinal cord. Your head's still there. 
it's not gruesome it's just your net your it's physically your brain is separated from your spinal cord that's decapitation so they were ever so delicately delicately uh remove the guy's head do all the <clears throat> delicate cutting of the spinal cord all the fibers of the spinal cord and i would even say that that's part of the easy part Cutting, cutting through all that stuff, it's going to be very time-consuming and very delicate, of course, but even that's easy compared to what comes next. Attaching the human head to the donor body. And again, it'll be relatively, quote-unquote, easy. I'm doing the air quotes. You can go on Geek Therapy YouTube, see, when I'm, see my body language. I've got a little Italian in me, apparently, I've been told, because I use my hands a lot. The easy part's going to be reattaching. All the arteries in the veins, in the muscle, in the neck, even the trachea and the esophagus, that's going to be easy, quote unquote. The trick is the spinal cord. That is where it all lies. If, and if they can get, apparently they're going to use a special glue to reattach all the fibers of the spinal cord, all the connections that's going to hopefully be able to send signals from the new brain to the donor body. And I'm going to go along in this segment and just make up for it in my other segments because there's there's a lot to get here. There's a lot to get out here. This is a monumental procedure. So they're going to use a special type of glue to reattach all the fibers of the spinal cord. And they're going, let's say they do all that uh, perfectly. They're going to keep the man in a coma for another few days to let obviously to let the connections heal hopefully the spinal connections will heal of course uh, well the the artery the the sutured muscles and arteries and all that stuff that will that might heal um but what we really 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 don't know is that the spinal cord's going to heal or heal well enough to send electrical signals from from the man down to his new body and these doctors say they have a 99% certainty that this is going to work. You want to know what my two cents is? I don't think it's going to work. Honestly. And this is one of those cases where I really hope I eat my words. This is one of those cases where I hope I'm really proven wrong. Because this would be amazing. Now, let's move on to the ethical and moral side of this. Let's say everything goes off without a hitch. His head does not reject the body. It's not just, you know, you think, oh, maybe it might reject the heart. Maybe it might reject the lungs. No, it's the whole freaking kit and caboodle. If the man's head and brain doesn't reject the body, is that man himself anymore? Does consciousness exclusively reside in the brain i tend to think it does um but you could argue that the spinal cord is part of that whole nervous system so if you're somebody who believes in a soul that's not even a soul it's consciousness um and let's say let's okay let's say this guy goes on to hopefully reproduce with let me be graphic a penis that is not his and DNA that is not his, and physical attributes that are not his. A, could he even produce sperm? Is that one, is that body function going to uh, work? If anything works, it'll be a miracle. But if he's able to uh, produce sperm, produce genetic material in order to procreate, are the kids that might be born going to be his kids or are they going to be the dead man's kids are they going what, what dna is the kid gonna have the, the the man with the brain or the donor body's dna so that's an ethical question um and real I, I, like really that's the only the biggest ethical it's not even ethical it's just that's a, that's a rub we're I'm getting confused here because uh, quite honestly, and there might be everybody, you know, lots of people listening that are just as confused, if not more so. 
That's natural. That's good. That's an, that's a natural expected reaction to this. We in December 2017, we are really sailing uncharted waters of science. This is an absolutely monumental undertaking. The ramifications of this procedure are quite literally groundbreaking. We are delving into an area of science and morality and ethics that we have not done before. They've experimented with head transplants with monkeys and dogs and stuff like that unsuccessfully. They've kept them alive for a little while with a lot of machines. The dog's head was able to, you know, respond to stimuli, sound and touch. It wasn't able to bark or do or even really open its eyes or anything. It just kind of bodies reacting to stimuli. Um, so, again, what baffles me about this is the surgeons and the doctors say we are 99 percent sure this is going to work. How do you know we've never attempted anything like this before on a human? An animal is complex already. A human is just another level of compl- of complexity. And uh, that's even without delving into all the moral ramifications and ethics surrounding this procedure. I am very fascinated. This, it, it's very unsettling to me. It's very unsettling to me because uh, the whole idea of decapitation and cutting off heads, that's icky. It makes me feel weird. Um, but the geek side of me, the nerd side of me is just like chomping at the bit, waiting for this to happen. Because it's going to be amazing. Even if it doesn't work, it's still going to be really cool to, to, to find the results. The guy who's, who's uh, Valerie, the guy who's um, volunteered to do this, he already knows that he could die. He already, whether, even if he dies, let's be honest, probably when he dies, we're going to learn a whole lot about transplanting in general. So I'm excited about this. This is going to be pretty amazing. You're listening to Geek Therapy Radio. There's plenty more to come. I'll get off. We won't talk about such morbid subjects, but uh, I'm Johnny Hamburger. Go visit Geek Therapy Radio on Facebook. Like it, please. Go on Instagram and uh, follow me on Instagram, Geek Therapy Radio on Instagram, and go on YouTube and subscribe to Geek Therapy Radio on YouTube. I don't just upload videos of the shows. I do, but there's also extra videos on there, like an in-depth tour of my 1983 DeLorean. It's up on Geek Therapy Radio's YouTube, so go check it out. And geektherapyradio.com. All the stuff. Just Google Geek Therapy Radio and subscribe to all of that stuff. So we'll be right back. More Geek Therapy Radio to come. Stick around. Let's go! 